We going for a run today. Ain't we, Chester? Hey, are we going for a run? Are we? Man, you're supposed to be our hype man. Hype it up. Here we go. You are now in the presence of a... All right, I just finished up with the run. Boy, Chester's tired. Look at him, boy, he's tired over there. <laughs> yeah, but we got a four mile run in today. I actually broke it up, did two miles, two miles out. And then I kind of looked along the banks trying to find some gators. I want to get some gators on camera. Every time I bring the camera, I can't find any gators, <clears throat> but I think I got some today. I won't really know until I get home, but I think I got some for you. Uh, but yeah, two miles out, two, two miles back in. Um, I felt pretty good today. I don't know how you guys are going to feel, but I felt like I was running a little bit stronger. About an 8 minute, 20 second pace, which is better than last week. So improvements are always good. But I ain't got much else. Uh, you know, if you're following the schedule, today's Tuesday. You got tomorrow off. And then we'll be back in the gym on Thursday. So uh, y'all enjoy yourselves. Have a good run. I'll see you next time. So the plan is a four mile run today. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm probably gonna get out there about two miles and walk a little bit along the river. I'm gonna try to find a gator for you. There's some gators out here today. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little warm, sun's out. It's gonna be some gators on the bank. I sure hope. Anybody's legs sore from yesterday? <laughs> Mine are a little. about all I need today. Let's get it. All right, Chester, we rolling. Back here, boy. <laughs> Stay away from that water, buddy. Come on. Chester, come on. This is Gator City, man. Let's go. Let's go this way. Go around this corner. It'd probably be a gator. See, there's one. He went in the water. Do you see him? Got one. Okay, Chester, let's stay away from the water. Come on, this way.
know if y'all can see that or not. Okay, I think I see a big one up this way. Yeah, it's on the bank. You probably can't see it. Shit. Hold on. Let me get closer. Oh crap, I missed him. We're too loud. He's like right there. See I'm getting moved. He's stone cold out there. I'll let you be, buddy. What's going on, everybody? I hope you're having a great day. It is a beautiful day here um, where I'm at. If it's not a great day for you, I'm sure it'll turn around. Don't worry about it. Today, I'm going to bring to you part two of a three-part series I'm doing on supplements. And if you didn't see part one, it's all good. I can just bring you up to speed real quick. I'm basically doing a series on the supplements that I took while I was going through this workout program. I'm not recommending all of them by any means. But in part one, I talked about three supplements that I highly recommend. Whey protein electrolytes, and creatine monohydrate. I recommend those products confidently because there's a ton of studies out there, a ton of research showing their effectiveness and their safety. So it's easy for me to recommend those. Today, I'm going to talk about peptides. And I can't just all out in good conscience recommend them because there's not a whole lot of human clinical studies on them. Peptides have been out for quite some time and there's a lot of animal studies, a lot of anecdotal evidence from people who have been using them. And if you just do a little bit of research on the internet, you'll see there's a ton of information out there. There's a ton of doctors talking about them. So um, check it out. This is a good time for me to point out that I'm no health expert. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. Although I did play a doctor in third world countries, that's not going to give me any more credibility on this topic. Let's kind of jump into it peptides. First off, let me just explain what peptides are. Peptides are basically naturally occurring amino acids that are chained or sequenced in a certain way in order to hit certain receptors in your body so that you can get a desired result or so that it can trigger a response from your body. Now, I know that's a pretty general definition, and that's because there's a ton of peptides out there that are doing a ton of different things. Today, I'm gonna to talk about four peptides that I took when I was going through this workout program. Um, actually, I took five peptides. Four of them I took for working out purposes, and the fifth one I took more for, I was very interested in, I started doing some research. It's a uh, more for a life-lengthening, anti-aging type of peptide. So I probably won't talk about these peptides too in depth. I'm just kind of give you a broad overview. One, because I could really talk about each one of them for a long time. There's a lot of studies out there, a lot of people that have shared their experiences. And two, I really want you to do your own research. I don't want you to just listen to me. I want you to maybe get interested about it and go find out a little bit more on your own. At the end of the day, we only got one body. We got to take care of it. All right, let's get started. The first two peptides that I took, BPC-157 along with TB-500. I'm going to talk about these two together because they work synergistically together. A lot of people you'll find who take BPC-157 also take TB-500 with it. As a matter of fact, if you type in peptides, Wolverine stack, that's what's going to come up. All right, it's very common to use together. BPC-157, let's we'll just start with that one. BPC stands for body protective compound. Now this is a peptide that is derived from gastric juices and proteins that are found in your gut. 
Some of the benefits include faster wound healing, faster recovery from soft tissue injuries, improved sleep, increased weight loss. And one of the really, I think maybe one of the bigger benefits that I wasn't expecting is your improved gut health. And it kind of makes sense because it's derived from your gastric juices in your gut. But a lot of people take BPC-157 who have some gut issues like irritable bowel syndrome, leaky gut, ulcerative colitis, ulcers in general. So if you have some gut issues, if you have chronic diarrhea or something like that, you might want to consider BPC-157. Some of the negative side effects of BPC-157, fortunately, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of negative side effects out there, at least not reported. But there are some, and it's pretty common stuff like headaches, nausea. There tends to be a little bit of irritation and itchiness at the injection site. So yeah, you heard me, it's it, you, generally for most peptides, you are gonna inject them using a insulin needle. It's just a little tiny needle that you're gonna inject subcutaneously just underneath the skin. And for the most part, you know, that does kind of suck. If you can get over the day in and day out of being a pincushion, it really isn't that bad. I guess you would call that a negative for this, but actually BPC-157 is one of those peptides that you can take orally if you do so choose. But I would recommend the injectable. It seems like that one works a lot better. The other peptide that I took in conjunction with is TB500. TB500 is uh, basically thymosin beta-4. And what that does is it stimulates your thymus gland to produce more thymosin. So your thymus gland is something that's uh, located in the center of your chest, kind of between your lungs, behind your sternum. And this is something that produces, okay, so thymosin is something that is produced when we're younger, we produce a lot more of it. And as we get older and we age, we naturally just don't produce nearly as much. So that's kind of what TB500 does. It stimulates the production of that. And basically what thymosin does is if you were to get into a car wreck or you have some kind of an injury, when a thymosin is running through your bloodstream, it finds those open wounds or what have you, and it will go to that area and it will help with recovery. Uh, one of the things that it does, is it stimulates um, angiogenesis. And actually, TB, I think I forgot to mention this, PB, BPC-157 also does that. So angiogenesis is basically, the it's a medical term for increased blood flow. And what's going on is basically your body is just making more blood vessels, all right, to help with the getting oxygen to your cells. Some of the benefits of TB500 are really a lot of the same things that uh, BPC-157 has, increased wound healing time, increased injury recovery time. Also, is there's some reported cognitive benefits as well. And some of the negative side effects, again, kind of like BPC-157, they kind of had the same issues. Uh, a little nausea, a little dizziness reported, headaches, and sometimes a little bit of irritation at the injection site. One thing I do think I need to note on this one though, is that the angiogenesis portion of this, although it seems on the surface to be a really good thing, angiogenesis could have some potential issues if you're doing a lot of high intensity interval training, all right? And the problem is, is that it potentially could cause some thickening of the, which is something that we really don't wanna have. Now, um, I don't know of anyone who's experienced this or I haven't really read too much about this, but I follow a guy named Andrew Huber Huberman. He's a doctor that really does deep dives into all kinds of different things, um, but he's a workout, exercise scientist type of guy. And he really does talk about a lot of medications, a lot of peptides, and he, he just goes a lot deeper into things than I'm gonna go into today. I'm just kind of scratching the surface here. So I would recommend, and I'll probably put a link in the description of um, Dr. Huberman talking about some of these things. Very good to watch, you know, his podcasts are a little long, so hopefully uh, you have some time, maybe on a long drive to check it out. Very much so worth uh, looking into. 
I also want to mention just you know, like, I don't want to go too deep into it, but one of the real things that brought me to BPC 157 and TB 500 is they did a study on mice. They took a bunch of mice and they actually severed their Achilles tendon. One group of mice got TB 500. The other group was a control group, didn't get anything. The group of mice that got the BPC 157, they healed way faster than the control group did. Uh, and there's a ton of athletes who swear by it. If they get injured, man, they start taking BPC-157 right away. It's really kind of what got me into it. It's really the reason I got into peptides for the most part. I have some chronic injuries that I've been dealing with. The military, uh, you know, if you're in the military long enough, you're going to get it. I had a torn labrum in my left shoulder, torn rotator cuff. In my right shoulder, torn rotator cuff. I had a broken back, which gave me some sciatica tightness in my back and then um, when I started this workout program I had this really nagging elbow injury all right I used to pitch a long time ago I injured it a long time ago I injured it fast roping it's just something that kind of comes back to me and to be honest with you I wanted to start doing stem cells I started reading about peptides and I thought I'd give that a try first I still want to do stem cells but it was much easier for me to go ahead and start doing peptides. Anyways, so that's kind of how I got into this. But yeah, so that's kind of, in a nutshell, BPC-157 and TB-500, <sighs> pretty, pretty good peptide. Very safe, it appears to be, and some really good benefits. And I just scratched the surface on it. There's a ton more benefits that I didn't talk about. The next two peptides that I took are CJC-1295 and Ipamorelin. Now, these two peptides work synergistically together to increase your body's natural production of human growth hormone. They're two totally different peptides that work two totally different ways that stimulate your pituitary gland to increase growth hormone production. Here's kind of some of the differences. CJC-1295 is in the category of GHRH, uh, human growth hormone reproducing hormone. And it has a much longer half-life in days, uh, meaning it stays in your body for days. And it's versus the ipamorelin, which is in the category of um, a secretagogue and ghrelin agonist. And it has a half-life more in the, in the hours time frame. Many times used together because of their synergistic effects. And so, the benefits of this, okay, we all know, or most of us at least know, that human growth hormone is known as the anti-aging hor hormone. When we're younger, as we're kids, we produce a lot of it, and as we get older, we just don't produce nearly as much. Some of the studies are showing an uh, increase of anywhere 200 to 1,000 percent of growth hormone when you start taking these peptides. Now, hang on a second. A lot of that, there's a lot of factors to that. You know, how, how are you dosing it? How much are you taking? Are you taking it twice a day, once a day? Are you working out a lot? Are you getting good sleep? So, you know, there's a lot of factors involved as to, you know, how much increase you're gonna get if you start taking these peptides. But um, nonetheless, that's impressive. So the benefits of growth hormone, increased recovery time from your workouts, um, muscle growth, increased fat loss, better sleep. There's also some cognitive benefits to it, just to name a few. There's a ton more things like, uh, oh yeah, increased, uh, you know, better skin, nails, hair, and things like that. Those are some of the, the main benefits. Some of the negative side effects of human growth hormone, or excuse me, not human growth hormone, but of, of the peptides, CJC-1295 and ipamorelin. the negative side effects are kind of the same. Headache, dizziness, and a little bit of irritation at the injection site. There is something that I do need to mention though. If you're taking human growth hormone and you have cancer, you have a cancerous tumor or something like that, it's going to accelerate the cancer growth. If you're someone who's prone to cancer or you've had cancer in the past and you're recovering from cancer, this might not be something that you wanna take. All right, I gotta mention that, it's very important. So be careful out there. if you're in that category. Oh yeah, I think it's also very important to note that 
there's a huge difference between taking peptides to stimulate your natural production of human growth hormone versus taking, you know, synthetic HGH, which you've probably heard of HGH being abused by bodybuilders, being taken by professional athletes to increase performance. There's a huge difference between taking peptides and HGH. When you take peptides, you're basically stimulating your body to produce more. You're not shutting it down versus if you start taking HGH, your body just kind of shuts down. It doesn't produce anymore because now it has a bunch of HGH in a system. Okay, so it's a very significant difference and I think it's way better to stimulate your body to produce more than to shut it down. Also, it doesn't seem like peptides have the same negative side effects that the synthetic version of HGH has. For one, acromegaly is noted, and all acromegaly is is the enlargement of some bones in your body. So you might see like larger forehead or a bigger head in general. Hands and feet tend to be affected as well. Another negative side effect from taking HGH, really it's abusing it, is a, a distended stomach. Right? A lot of times you'll see these bodybuilders and they don't have hardly any fat on them, but they got this big rounded stomach. And that's most likely from taking synthetic version of HGH. These peptides, they don't seem to have those same negative side effects. So I think that's pretty important to note, um, a significant difference in those two. Yeah, all right. So those are the four peptides that I took for performance, for working out, you know. I wanted to increase fat loss and muscle growth. Those are the real, real thing. And, and uh, increase recovery times. You know, that's kind of like the main focus I had and the reason I took those peptides. Now I said there was a fifth peptide that I took and I kind of just took it because I got very interested in it. I uh, started doing research and man, I just wanted to try it out. And that peptide is called epitalon, or it may also be called epithalon. You know, it's the same thing, they're just spelled a little bit differently. Epitalon is known for its powerful life extending properties and anti-aging properties. It does so by stimulating the pineal gland to produce more telomerase. More telomerase in your body helps strengthen and lengthen your telomeres. All right, and if you don't know what telomeres are, I get it, I didn't know either, but telomeres are basically like the end caps to your DNA. When we're young, younger people in general, they have much longer telomeres, and as we age, naturally those telomeres start to shorten. Longer telomeres are linked to healthier cells, more cell division, and thus potentially lengthening our lifespan. So yeah, that's kind of like the big benefit there, at least that I'm hoping for. There's noted benefits of increased energy levels, better sleep, cognitive benefits, as well as prevention of cognitive and neurological diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, just to name a few. So yeah, I have a little bit of uh, Alzheimer's in my family. My great grandmother had it. So uh, I saw how that affected her and the whole family. And man, that's, that's some scary stuff. You know, anything I can do to try to prevent that, I'm gonna try, you know? So as long as the risk versus reward is there. And what I could tell, not a whole lot of negative side effects with this as well. Same kind of deal with these other peptides. Just something that I was experimenting with myself. Do I know if I'm gonna live longer? Hell, I don't know. But uh, I can tell you the reason I started looking into that is because I started looking at the research done by this, uh, is a Russian doctor, his name was Dr. I might get this wrong. His name was Dr. Vladimir Kavinson. And he did a lot of studies and research on this. And one of the studies that I thought was really amazing is that he took a group of mice and he had a control group or a placebo group that didn't get anything. And the other group of mice, he was giving uh, epitalon. The group of mice that got epitalon lived on average 30% longer than the control group. All right, pretty amazing stuff. Something I was very interested in, of course, I'm gonna live forever, so <laughs> why not, right? It's an experiment at the end of the day. I can't, you know, recommend it fully, but if you do your own research and you look into it, you're gonna see there's a lot of cool stuff about epitalon and really the other peptides that I talked about. So I highly encourage you to do your own research and see if it's something that's for you. What's up, man? How's it going?
Cool. So that's kind of really all I had for you today. I wanted to talk about peptides, something that's a little bit in the gray area, something that a lot of people don't know about. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something and I uh, really just want to be transparent with you with all the things that I'm taking or I took while I was going through this workout program. There's no magic pills. There's no magic drugs out there. You still got to put the work in. All right, make sure you eat healthy, make sure you're working out consistently, and I think you're going to be all right. So that's all I got for you today. Y'all have a good one. Stay out of trouble. Stay strong. Stay in a fight. See you in the next one.